So an important election took place last night in Ohio where Chantel Brown defeated Nina Turner. And you know the importance of, of this particular story and why we're choosing to cover this is because it reveals a lot of what goes on in the deeper institutions of politics and where the corruption is with that. So I got David Helfrick here. We're going to be diving through this story. David, tell us what exactly happened and why this is important. Indeed, good to see you, Joe. So last night there was a special election in Ohio's 11th congressional district. Chantel Brown defeated Nina Turner 51% to 44%. Um, and in, in this district, the Democratic nominee is almost guaranteed to go on and win the election. So Chantel Brown will be the next congresswoman from Ohio's 11th congressional district. Why this is interesting is because this was sort of your classic pit between the establishment wing of the Democratic Party and the progressive wing of the party. But what was interesting here is it wasn't just Democrats who lined up to defeat Nina Turner. It was essentially the entire establishment of both parties coalesced together to defeat Nina Turner. And we may ask, why did this happen? Well, Nina Turner committed a number of cardinal sins, uh, according to the Democratic Party. One, she was co-chair of Bernie Sanders' 2020 campaign. You know, given that the Democrats launched an anyone but Bernie, even if it means Trump campaign, <laughs> Nina Turner was pretty much public enemy number one to them. You know, she also refers to Tulsi Gabbard as her sister and they share a very deep friendship. This is also a cardinal sin in the Democratic Party. You can't like somebody like Tulsi Gabbard and get away with it. You know, the party, they were just alarmed at the prospect of Nina holding a congressional seat. So this brought out all the usual characters, even Hillary Clinton weighed in on this campaign and endorsed Chantel Brown, Nina's opponent, which is interesting because Hillary Clinton kind of remains quiet these days, but. You could tell she was so insulted by Nina Turner supporting Bernie Sanders uh, that she felt she wanted to personally get involved in this race. What's interesting is that Nina actually had a record fundraising haul the day Hillary Clinton endorsed her opponent, but that still wasn't enough to, to sort of give her the momentum to defeat the entire establishment win, which included Hillary Clinton, uh, Jim Clyburn, um, the Congressional Black Caucus, well-funded super PACs, Republican donors and, you know, everyone under the sun, you know, essentially the only support Nina really had from mainstream politicians were the Justice Democrats, uh, progressives like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Tulsi Gabbard, Bernie Sanders, et cetera, et cetera. But it proved to be an insurmountable windfall of establishment uh, momentum that essentially, um, you know, drained Nina and, and unfortunately she will not win this seat. Right. So, you know, obviously the mainstream media is not going to cover this type of story, especially not like this, right? Um, why is this important to understand for the average person who puts a lot of faith in the political process? Well, for one, you know, we, we, do, we always talk about and champion the democratic process in the United States, but, but seldom do we actually talk about the impediments to the democratic process to where your vote really has the sanctity in the ballot box that we, that we like to purport it does. I mean, if you look at what happened in this race, the dark money, the super PAC money, um, the elitist figures come in to really circumvent the people's voice. This wasn't just about the people of Ohio. You had all these figures outside of Ohio coming in to influence this race and really circumvent the will of the people um, through disingenuous ads, dishonesty, um, personal smears, and things that really influence the voters when it comes to, to, to really making their decision. So, I mean, when you look at this, you have you have donors who supported Chantel Brown, who have a history of supporting Republican candidates. Uh, you had the Political Action Committee, Democratic Majority for Israel, who are a major backer of Donald Trump's campaign. They actually spent $1.2 million on ad money in this race, you know, really simply because Nina Turner was standing up for the rights of Palestinians. I mean, you know, you even had New England Patriot owner Robert Kraft, a close ally of Trump, come in and support a Democrat, Chantel Brown, just because, you know, they just didn't want Nina Turner to win the seat. So everyone under the sun came out. And what this demonstrates is that if you're a progressive like Bernie Sanders or Nina Turner or an independent minded thinker like Tulsi Gabbard or Andrew Yang, there's simply no place for you in the Democratic Party. You are not welcome. And they made this loud and clear. Would you argue that the same could be said for the Republican Party? <laughs> well, for sure. I mean, yes, when, when you look at the sort of the rot of corruption in both parties, you know, there's a lot of similarities, all the differences we like to kind of outline in mainstream media about the two parties. When it comes to really supporting the corporate money, uh, corporate interests over people, 
um, supporting the military industrial complex. Both parties are really in alignment. So when you have somebody like Nina Turner, who's unafraid to challenge this corruption in both parties, you see both parties come together to say we have to eliminate this threat to to our status quo. And that's what happened here. Right. Well, thanks so much for sharing uh, this insight here on what's going on. I mean, I, I love the revelation of what really goes on behind the scenes uh, in the political, uh, you know, sort of arena and what this makes us question in terms of what we're supporting when it when it comes to our current political state. So thanks. Uh, thanks for being here and sharing that. For sure. Good to be with you, Joe.